Hey, um, this video is going to be about uh, trying to get to the um, evaporator, uh, evaporator core, uh, also probably the uh, uh, heater core uh, for a 2D, uh, 2010 uh, Dodge Ram 1500. I've got like about 177 or 72,000 miles on this truck and uh, you know I've been doing this for uh, I think about a couple of years now where I've been refilling the AC and it gets to a point where um, you know it usually doesn't bother me and lasts for the summer but then when I need it the most uh, it only lasts uh, it, it lasts me about a month and a half or so and then I had to proceed to to refilling it literally every day so I, I'm pretty sure the from all the videos I've seen it is the uh, evaporator core if not you know what hey it's an experience at the end of the day I did check the uh, lines all the way to the condenser I don't see any issues I haven't looked at the uh, expansion valve it looks kind of rusty so it could be part of where that is but a lot of times they say it is due to the uh, AC evaporator uh, core and it's because like in the earlier models uh, the uh, filter box right here which is you know Ram did decided not to allow you to put a filter in there um, that's where all the dust collects and then it kind of causes clogging and eventually the the uh, the core itself uh, starts to have like uneven changes of cooling effect and then the uh, parts start to break anyways regardless of the fact first thing you want to do uh, basically go ahead and uh, remove uh, disconnect your uh, battery uh, show you right here you want to disconnect that battery and uh, proceed forward now a lot of the times what happens is you want to go ahead and bring your vehicle to a AC uh, shop or a repair shop so that they can go ahead and remove the refrigerant right if you do have refrigerant um, since mine is literally no pressure uh, pretty much there's unlikely going to be any refrigerant in there so and from what I've read is a uh, refrigerant um, e evaporation e evacuation is actually free I did call I did call some places and uh, they basically said it's free but some places kind of demanded that if it's free you have to come back so we can refill it that's like about 200 bucks or so so anyways uh, again mine is low proceeding forward first step you want to do remove that panel right there that panel connects all the way here and it allows you to see the uh, connectors I went ahead and I disconnected a couple but there are, I believe there's like about a few in here this is one to let me get a light uh, the yellow one is another so three and then the green one is four uh, the one you see right up there with the white piece that's actually your antenna so and then you have the heater blower um, you can see it right there you actually don't need to disconnect that um, that comes out with the entire box okay um, so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect um, and uh, I'll, you know, I'll return back to the video. Okay, now that you disconnected the clips, uh, there's one uh, bolt right there to uh, uh, that you're gonna need to remove. Try to pull this entire dash out. And then basically, you want to remove this panel right here. Go from there. Okay, so I went ahead and used one of these popped it out I'm gonna do the repeat the same over there on the uh, the driver's side uh, so anyways you can see it allows access to the bolts so this side uh, basically remove the uh, that connector I use one of these to uh, pop it out next you want to go ahead and remove this uh, kick panel all right the uh, kick panel came off basically the OBD2 um, the clips pop on the side it comes right off <coughs> next go ahead and these three screws they're uh, 13 millimeter passenger side three bolts again one two third one is right about here just go ahead and pull those out same thing 13 millimeter okay next piece is that center piece and basically underneath there is some, some bolts once we get to there we'll see what, what they are so it's held on by clips I recommend 
start from this side, uh, lightly tug, then go to the opposite side. Okay, right underneath that panel was 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolts on some both sides. Next, you want to get these, uh, um, uh, this panel out though, where the grab bar is on both sides. You're going to want to use something to uh, pop that open and then get to the screws there to be on both sides so that you can get access to the uh, that pan panel right underneath the windshield. I know it's a little blurry, but panel right underneath the windshield. So, anyways. Once it's popped open, uh, right underneath there is 10 millimeter screws. Again, try to keep track of your screws. Uh, what I've been doing is, uh, after you, I, re I removed this, I removed it on the other side. Kind of just yanks out. I just throw the screws back in here and I pop the cap back. I just put it on the side. That, that way I'll remember those screws go there. Up to you what you want to do. Okay. At this point, uh, basically it looks like there's two See one over there, one over here. You want to try to pop that out. Just again, just be careful. You're working with the windshield. Um, I've been using this throughout the entire thing. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, um, you know, use whatever you can. Again, everything is under your own discretion. Not responsible for anything broken or damaged on your side. All right, uh, right underneath looks to be 10 millimeter bolts. Again, be very careful. This close to the windshield. You know, here's a little tip. Whenever you do this, just don't just try to remove the bolt. Um, find some way that you remove the bolt carefully so that when you do put it back, you're able to put it back and tighten it. Otherwise, a lot of us uh, or, you know, some some people, all they do is just remove. And they do whatever method it takes, but they don't think about how it is to put it back. So this is one of those things where you want to be able to do it in a way where you remove it carefully to allow you to put it back right the right way so anyways I use a an extension piece here so that allows me to just turn it that way I can remove the bolt easily and then when I put it back I just hand screw it and then tighten it from there all right the uh, the next thing to remove is uh, the brake how that works is that uh, there's a there's like a clip you'll see it right Ooh. You'll be able to see, should be able to see it. Let me see here. Well, you see that metal rod? It's hard to see. But anyways, um, it goes to, right, right there. There's a metal rod right behind my finger. It goes to a clip. You just have to carefully remove it. Okay. Anyways, you could do it one of two ways. I went ahead and just disconnected it from... See where that red clip is? I disconnected it right from the central source. Uh, so next thing we're gonna do is uh, maybe the clips for the brakes, the uh, the connectors. So I'll show you. It's kind of dark. Uh, another cable is this underneath the uh, steering, and then you have another one right here. And you can see it also connected right next to the steering assembly oh yeah make sure you get the uh, uh, those two right there where the pedals are all right so I had an alarm in the way so I went ahead and I cleared it um, there it is I just removed uh, some of the zip ties so just look inside and see what needs to be cleared I had to remove this one right here. It was attached right about, uh, right about, uh, it's kind of hard to see. It's right behind there. Now, the only thing that's left, well, from what I can see is, uh, uh, let me see if I can get the camera. But I'm not trying to angle it. There it is. See one of the bolts? There's four of them. They're 13. So the steering column should come down. I see this one attached one right there. I already disconnected that, but that looks like it's attached to the steering column, so it should come down with it. The rest of the wires of mine is kind of hanging right across. Hopefully it should be enough leeway when it comes down. I'm hoping. If not, then, you know, figure something else. So we'll go from there. 
All right, now that you've got that down, um, the reason why is you need to get to those access bolts right there. See it right behind uh, those two screws that held up the uh, steering column? You can see it right there. There's two of them. It looks like 10 millimeters. Um, I can't really put mine down all the way. I mean, I, I actually can. I would have to snip a lot of these. Uh, but I think if I do it like this, it'll kind of, well, I don't know. You you do what you feel is, is necessary for you. Um, you know, uh, at the same time, you, you do what's best. You know, you clear what you can. What I did is I, I tried to snip a lot of the uh, uh, the zip ties, uh, enough to loosen up that stupid alarm. Uh, somehow the cables run across, so. But anyways, I shoved this here so that it kind of holds it up a bit. I'm gonna try to remove this because that's the one piece that will allow the dash to kind of slide out. Okay, so I'm gonna start removing it. All right, once you uh, remove those two that anchored the, uh, the dash, it should start to move. Let me see here. There, see that? See the movement? So I'm gonna try to manipulate this whole thing to try to sit up. Uh, oh, again be a one person job so let's see how this works all right so um, it, the whole thing just slides off you want to make sure all the cables and everything is intact I had one in particular that was very difficult it was this one well you can see the yellow pieces there not sure what it is looks like a, some kind of stereo type wire that's what it looks like I traced it back I thought it was the antenna. Well, that's the antenna. So, anyways. Look over the other side too, just to make clear. I looked over there and it looks okay. I don't see anything that uh, seemed to be off. Other than my uh, the alarm that was in the way. Uh, there's like a, a power cable that runs straight there. It has a little tension on it, but I don't think it's torn or ripped or anything at this moment. Uh, moving forward. So this is where, you know, your heated core sits and your uh, evaporator biggest thing here is you deciding what you're going to do so some people are going to remove the whole box and others will only do half right so what do people say here usually when you have this out you might as well change out both things um, I don't know so you get to decide what you want to choose. There's videos out there to remove the whole box. I'm going to try to just do this side. Now, if it has to, then I'll get to the other, I'll, you know, remove the whole box. But, yeah, I know a lot of people are thinking, well, then, you know, you're going to have to do this all over again. Um, I'll tell you one thing. It's, you know, doesn't seem to be, it is time consuming, yes. But, uh, who knows I like do you, do you like challenges that's what you should ask yourself and do you have time yeah so figure that out all right uh, so I'm gonna try to see if I could do only one particular side this side if it doesn't then we'll go ahead and do both right I might change my mind in the middle of the way and just do both oh yeah by the way you gonna move the entire box one screw there uh, There's one there, one down there. Oh yeah, the other one is right there. See it? Right next to where the vents are. There's three that I can see from the inside. So, uh, but, you know, before you do that, you might want to start disconnecting some of these lines so that uh, it doesn't interfere. Okay, the uh, the next screws are in here. You will you'll see one. Uh, really hard to see. <laughs> Put this down there. You see it right there? It's right above the line. That one right there. And then there is another one. Uh, let me see. It's kind of blocking it. There it is. So you see where the low pressure gauge is? I mean, uh, the low pressure. Um, uh, uh, the low pressure port is. And you see that black thing right there? That's the other one right there. So, best thing to do, I 
think uh, we move this, make it easier. Or you can just go ahead and attempt to reach all the way down there. Okay. All right, guys. So I went ahead and I did this the hard way, which is where you leave the box in. I didn't want to disconnect the heater core. So I released the three bolts uh, that hold that uh, vent there because it's a this is a crew cab. And it kind of gave me some wiggle room. Um, after you remove three bolts that are behind that firewall on the opposite side of the engine, you get to wiggle this out, right? So there's a heater core, and I didn't want to mess with that. But um, what I did here is there's three bolts. One, two, and then one right underneath there. It's uh, between the expansion valve. So and then after that, it's just a matter of clips, right? So one two and then there's two on the bottom and then all the clips on the side that goes all the way around you'd be able to access it it's just a little difficult if you're small yes you can get to it if you're not yeah but anyways look at this this is this is why this thing never held so um anyways at this point it's just a matter of taking this out and uh, replacing it with a new one and i already purchased that And this is tight. Oh, there it is. And let me just get this sucker out. So it's probably held down by another clip. But anyways, remove it. Take anything that you need, usually the foam. <coughs> I'm gonna replace the expansion valve too. And then put everything together. So uh, I'll try to show you in the next clip. All right, guys. This is my new AC condenser. What I did was, uh, I mean, AC evaporator. Went ahead and removed uh, the uh, foam that was on the original one. And I also uh, went ahead and uh, uh, replaced it with a new uh, expansion valve. Um, what I did was I uh, went ahead and put new seals. So, order the packet. You can order a packet. This is what I use. So, AC component seals. Went ahead and I replaced all the seals. I used pack oil. So, Put two ounces of uh, pack oil in here and uh, the rest will go into uh, the uh, compressor because uh, I'm also replacing the compressor too. Uh, that one failed on me as well. So anyways, it's a matter of putting it back and uh, hopefully getting everything in the you know the correct way. All right, uh, everything else will be the opposite of uh, everything that I did. So good luck to you guys and uh, you know hope you guys are able to do it. All right.